Uh, so we're very happy to have our first uh, speaker um, of this series, uh, Arno Pauli from Swansea University, who's going to be talking about the structure of wire degrees, what we know and what we don't know. Thanks. Um, thanks for the e e introduction. Thanks for having me. Um, not that much thanks for making me speak at what is 9.30 nine in the evening for, for me, but that's the problem with living on a um, globe. Right, when I suggested the title and the abstract, I thought that this was a topic I could exhaustively cover in a one hour talk without sort of speaking extremely fast and so on. Um, and then ob obviously when I started to create these slides and think about what exactly I wanted to bring up, it turned out, no, it's actually, sort of, we both know more and we don't know more than ultimately can, can fit here. So I've made some selections um, and I will, and it's plausible that I will actually skip some of these slides as well. Um, I'm not going to assume that a huge amount of familiarity with viral degrees and so on. Um, so I'll, I know that, that many of you have heard plenty of talks on them, so hopefully everyone will, will get something out of the talk. So I'll, I'll actually start with pointing to some sort of papers for, for, for further reading rather than having them at the end. The one text to read if you want to know stuff about viral degrees um, is this survey paper, um, which you can find on the archive. Now, since this is from three and a half years ago now, it is not, not up to date anymore. And um, in the last fall, I've tried to gather a bit of what happened after that survey was um, written and tried to point to some interesting open questions and so on and put in short update on the archive. Of course, that's now again out of date stuff has happened since, but um, yeah, that's, that's about as, as much as I can offer. So the sort of viral degrees in a nutshell, what is it, why are we interesting about, um, why, why are we interested in this kind of stuff slide? Um, it's a reducibility notion that's comparing multi-valued functions between represented spaces um, by essentially computable many one reductions. Um, the fact that sort of having represented spaces here, what you really need to know about that is twofold. One is uh, we know what a computable function on a represented space is. So a represented space comes with a computability structure and sort of Outside of set theory, with a few more exceptions, um, we know how to turn the kind of spaces you might potentially want to have a computability structure on into a re represented space. So we generally know how to find computability structures that make sense. Now, in contrast to the sort of typical work on reducibility um, and their uh, de degree structures that, that I've seen in computability theory in um, theoretical computer science, we have a rather rich algebraic structure on them. So there are a bunch of operations that uh, produce new viral de de degrees from, from those that, that we have. Um, which is one of the reasons why a talk about the structure of the viral degrees has many different components actually to, to bring up. Uh, the sort of purpose of introducing them in the, in the first place was that a lot of mathematical theorems can be interpreted as essentially, well, 
are related to a, a multi-valued function, which is essentially a, this golem function for a pi zero two form statement. Um, classic example, pro a fixed point theorem for every con con continuous self map on the unit hypercube, there is a fixed point. Very natural question is then to ask, well, how difficult is it to compute the fixed point from that continuous self map? Um, and that's when we're sort of looking at the, the value of the degrees it comes in. And the sort of the algebraic operations that we would study have logic-like meanings regarding those theorems. So some operations will be forms of and um, and so on. That's that will be quite a bit of what I talk about later. So I'll keep it brief here. Um, a lot of stuff has been looked at. Many, many themes have well understood by of the degrees now. And um, sort of it's very common that, for example, classifying a theorem in, in reverse mass and classifying the viral of the degree of that theorem um, of has proofs which are identical to 90% and more. There are, there are cases where you sort of have to work a lot harder in one of the settings or where even the answers are completely different. Um, there isn't any kind of auto nice automatic translation, but a lot a lot of the times it's it's just that the kind of stuff that you need to do is the same things. Um, also something which is maybe worth pointing out we have a bunch of techniques to prove that uh, certain variety degrees are actually distinct, um, which again, I think is, is a bit different to many other cases. Like specific Turing degrees that you care about are iterations of the halting problem where you don't, sort of, where you don't really need a lot of techniques. Um, in complexity theory, we really don't know how to prove that stuff is different. Um, one of the reasons why I've sort of decided to become a computability theorist, not a complexity theorist, was that complexity theory just seemed so embarrassing, and I didn't want to have to explain why we still can't do anything um, much nicer in com computability theory. Can we can actually prove stuff? All right, that's the very short overview. So now the slightly more formal notion of, of what a represented space is. The idea is we know what it means to uh, compute with infinite binary sequences because we can feed those into a Turing machine and so on. And then we just code whatever we run it. We, we really want to compute with, with those infinite binary sequences. Um, it then is very natural that we look at uh, multi-valued functions between the objects that are actually interesting. And one reason is that uh, since it will almost always be the case that objects have many different names, that means that if you have a concrete Turing machine that is doing some computation, that Turing machine might take different names for this same object and maps them to um, different uh, two names for distinct objects. And sometimes that's really something that, that should happen. For example, if you have a, um, a um, polynomial with uh, leading co coefficients one, you can compute a complex root of that. What you cannot do is you cannot go and compute any particular complex root, hence, you really have an algorithm that you want to run, which is doing a multi-valued function. And that's what we will do then. Um, we just take notions like computability and continuity, which we understand on campus space. And then we say that uh, the multi-valued function between represented spaces is computable or continuous. If, um, if there is something with that property that we can plug in at the top of this diagram such that everything computes. Okay, so now we can do define what reducibility is. And I think the uh, 
the box at the bottom is hopefully explaining the idea best. We have two problems to multivalued functions between represented spaces, F and G. And we're now going to pretend we have a magic black box that can solve G. So if we feed an input to G, we get correct answers. And now if we can build a box that, that, that solves F using this box plus computable stuff, um, then F is very reducible to G. That means the input we want to solve F4 comes in from the left. We can do some computations on that and feed it into um, G. And then we get some answer G is allowed to, 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 to give us there. We still have the input we, we, we want to ask F about. We do another computation, combine them somehow, and get some valid answer for F. And that's um, what a reduction is. So we, we, we will ask exactly one question to that oracle that we, that we have there. Okay. Um, for sort of, if, you, if, you, if you're just asking how does the structure of the var of degrees look like, it's enough to only consider multivariate functions defined on bare space, because every viral, each multivariate function is um, has a each viral degree has a representative of that form, um, and there are the sort of we get a slightly simpler definition. We again have our two multivariate or our two computable function. Um, K has to be able to map each valid input for F to some valid input for, um, for Gene. And then if we pairing um, an input for F uh, P with some Q that, that G may return if we feed it K of P, um, H always needs to produce some um, complete outputs there and that has to be a solution to, um, for F on that instance P. Most of the work that people have done on one of the degrees is about here's a particular theorem that we find interesting. We want to understand what is the viral degree here. Maybe there are some parameters of the theorem, and you want to know how do the parameters impact the, the viral degree and so on. There also has been quite a bit of work on creating a kind of scaffolding. Um, with that, I mean that we have sort of viral degrees, which are particularly convenient for proving that, um, for comparing other principles too, where we know the relation between these scaffolding ones and we, and we know very well how to prove that other principles are below a scaffolding one or are not below a, a um, or that a scaffolding one is not below them. And that's, that tells us sort of where roughly something new um, has to go. The kind of really pure structure questions really hasn't been done that much. And sort of one of the reasons for giving a talk on this particular topic is that I hope that I will be able to convince some people to do stuff there because I, there's more stuff there that I want to see done than I can do. Um, if you want to see what's going on in the, in the area, there's sort of the um, bibliography listing everything Vasco knows has been published in the area. Um, quite convenient. All right, so now is the moment where I look at how long I've already talked. And uh, yeah, I will not actually talk about each of these items. Um, plan is to have a look at some very basic, simple questions that we that were studied in the, in the start, for example, that zero degrees actually are a um, the lattice that we have joins and, and meets first. Um, then speak a little bit about, about what are the structures we know that we can embed them into the of the degrees, um, bring in some more 
operations rather than, than, than just the meet and join from the, um, um, from the first part. Something that has started really just last year is um, operations that essentially tell us how a Virog degree relates to particularly simple problems. Briefly mention that, skip the side comments, and then um, point to some areas where we really, really know ex extremely little, where, I, where hopefully people may start working on. All right, we have a lot of, we, we very often speak of the viral lattice, so it's a lattice and it's even a, a distributive lattice, and that was sort of one of the, the earliest things anyone said about what, what we have there. Um, the join is a rather straightforward thing. So um, in a sense, it, it's, it's often useful to think about all of these operation in terms of what questions would you ask um, and Oracle for that and what you what what answers do you do do you get? So the idea is that a question that you ask to the joint for F and G is a bit which is specifying whether you want to ask a question to F or whether you want to ask a question to to G, and then you say what question you actually want to ask that that principle, and the answer you you get is well the the answer that you asked for. Um, the idea here is that F goes from X to Y and G goes from U to V. So the second uh, bold face U should be AV. The meet is maybe a little bit weirder because the question that you ask to the, to the meet of F and G, that's just one question to F and one question to, uh, to G. And then you may get uh, the solution to the F one, or you may get the solution to the to the G one. You know which one you actually got, but you you just can't control which one you are going to to get. And that is one that where multivalueness comes comes in. So the most of the operations have the property that if you apply them on um, single valued functions, you get single valued functions, but here you get something multivalued, no matter what you start with. Okay, um, what kind of special de 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 degrees do we have? Are we dealing with the bounded lattice? And um, something rather straightforward is that the least value of the de 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 degree is just the problem that has no instances, hence it's sort of true for the boring reason that there is nothing to do. We then have uh, the sort of special de degree one, which is essentially things which are true in a non-boring way. And the representatives of the bar of degree one are all computable problems that have a computable instance. And here is where it, where it sort of matters that we have to ask a question to, her, uh, to, 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 to the Oracle. So if you have an Oracle which doesn't have any computable instances, that may be a problem because you can't just ask a question you don't care about. You need to somehow come up with something, you, a valid input. And if you can't do that, you, you, may, be able, you may fail to have a of re, re, reduction there. We can then ask, is there a greatest viral de degree? And it's rather straightforward. If, if you sort of think about what would make a, a multivalued function, the greatest viral degree, that means that it is a, a multivalued function which has no choice function. So we would be in the sort of somewhat odd situation that we have this sort of very constructively defined structure. The question whether there's a top element or not depends on whether we are using a weak version of the axiom of choice or not. Um, my favorite solution, and there are also other ways to define var of degrees that have that sort of differ just in the question of whether there's a top element or not, is to just say there is a top element 
Um, if you are working with the XM of choice, it's a fake one. We've just put there because we want to have one. If you don't use the XM of choice, then that's the degree of multi rate functions without choice functions. Okay, now something that a lot of people like in their distributive lattices, in particular, if they're supposed to be models for some of logic, is that they are complete so that we can take supremer and infima of, of all kinds of things. And that's a situation we, we really don't have here, which is making, sort of, which means that we can prove a lot of things that would all be trivial otherwise. So that's a positive way of seeing it. Um, there are no non-trivial suprema whatsoever. With that, I mean, if you take uh, countably many multivariate functions, either they don't have a so supremum or um, there's a finite subset of them whose supremum is the supremum of the whole thing. But you, if, you, if you aren't there yet after finitely many steps, you never get there. There is an obvious construction that may seem like it should be the supremum, which is just saying, well, the input is a natural number, n plus an instance to fn, and then the output is whatever fn would say is n. The problem there is that uh, having the sequence structure is a sort of artificial thing that doesn't align with how a supremum would be um, built, and you can you can always in a sense rearrange the sequence in a very weird way to get incomparable stuff because you can't align who, who needs to go where in a computer global way, and hence we don't have any such supremum. So, now in FEMA, um, sort of we can have non-trivial. <laughs> in FIMA, but we don't have all of them. And something which is, which, which feels very weird to me is that is the only proof I know of that shows that um, the var of the, 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 the degrees and the structure with the reverse um, direction of the re, 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 reaction are not isomorphic. It would be extremely weird to me if they were isomorphic. So that's, that's not a surprising thing, but I would have expected more obvious things pointing, pointing that way that um, that's what it is. Now, one reason why having a complete lattice is convenient is because then we can um, de de define, um, then we can define implications and the first implication anyone cared about um, was asking whether there is a least var of degree h depending on f and g such that if we take the join of f and h then we have enough to, to get g if this infimum would always be, be there that would mean that the var of lattice is a rubber I to run, which means that the dual of the row lattice is a shifting algebra, and we would hence be dealing with a model of into its tunistic logic, which would have made sort of which felt like it made a lot of sense back then because well we are dealing with something that feels like constructive truth value, so it should be well, it's but it's not these infima don't um, don't don't work um, and sort of if we think a bit further we see that sort of the viral lattice is should more be a model of some constructive linear logic thingy um, so we we kept on searching okay um, maybe this is the last moment where it makes sense for me to point out that I'm happy with being uh, ask questions while I'm talking. Um, I will jump from topic to topic quite a bit. I've already resigned myself in skipping over things. So don't worry about throwing me off schedule. Um, that ship has sailed. And I'll now jump to 
slightly different thing, namely what other structures uh, can we see there because that, that, that's interesting in its own right. And that's a way how we can uh, deduce things about the structure of the, of the row of the degrees. And the sort of starting point there is, um, is the Medvedev reducibility that compares subsets of a um, bare space and um, a set is below some other set is there's a computable function that maps every element of the second set to some element of the first set. Um, sort of the Turing degrees just show up very naturally there if you sort of move from um, a point in bare space to the singleton containing it's that point and um, throughout the talk I should point out there isn't any pattern to where I'm speaking about counter space and where I'm speaking hey, 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 about, about bare space um, nothing I'm saying to today cares about which space is used. Um, there's a rather sort of natural pro process to sort of map um, map that of degrees to 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 one of the degrees, and um, that is when we're just saying we look at the constant function that doesn't care about what the input is, but there's a computable input, and then get me some element of that set. Multivariate function, we don't care 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 which one, just get me one. Um, and that's pre preserving the the meat. So we, we've got kind of meat simulators embedding, um, but it doesn't preserve uh, the um, join because if if you would take the join in the Medvedev the, the degrees, we would actually uh, sort of interleave the elements. Um, one, one goes in the even bits, one goes in the odd bits. Hence, every element we would get from the join of two Medvedev degrees actually gives me gives us one element from the first and one from the second. Whereas taking the join of the Virov degrees is no longer a constant function, but rather a function where we input whether we want an element of the first or from the second, but we can only get one at a time. We can pick, but we only get get one. We can get a lattice <laughs> embedding uh, if we do the order the other way around. So um, in this construction here, we map a subset of, of bare space to the uh, constant function, which is defined only on that set, and which will answer zero, no matter what what happens. Now, Virov reductions between these principles means that getting answers to our questions is pointless, and answering the questions we're asked is completely straightforward too, because we just answer zero. The problem is we need to ask our oracle something, and asking our oracle something is the met method of reduction from the input, uh, from the domain of the input to the domain of the out, um, to, to the domain of that oracle that, that we're asking. Um, so this switches the di direction of the order, this preserves joints, this preserves meets, and we even know exactly how the um, range of, of that one looks like, um, the sort of half open interval in the viral of the, the, the degrees between the one that has no instances and between the one that, which is computable and has computable instances, that's, that, that's what we have then. Now, sort of one of those questions that look rather straightforward, where I don't even know really to start. Um, I know that the obvious construction uh, here from 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 and Kerati is that that is an a lattice embedding in the right di direction, but I have no clue how to sort of either find another one that works or how to prove that there is none. So here's one of those things that I don't know. Um, in, uh, well, since the viral degrees are really a many one reduction kind of thing, 
one could then ask whether the usual many one de degrees defines for subsets of the natural numbers should show up here. So um, yeah, that's, that's, that's just the standard one. The question was uh, raised by Schroer um, quite a while. And yes, we can do that. But here, I don't know of any way to do it in a non-weird way. Because the problem with many one reductions as usually done is, is that a yes answer and a no answer are completely different things because in a, in a many one reduction, you need to map the yes instances of the um, uh, problem that you're re re reducing from to the yes instances of the um, problems that, you're, that you are, are going to and the no instances. To, to the no ones, you can't swap. So we need something that can cover these truth values for us. Well, so we can just pick two incomparable Turing degrees and then um, map a subset of the natural numbers to essentially its characteristics function where the truth values are coded by these incomparable um, elements of Cantor space or other bare space here. Um, sort of the fact that they're non-computable and Incomparable is what's what's making sure that we really have to that we can't swap true and, and false here. Um, I'm pretty sure that there is no canonic choice of a pair of incomparable uh, Turing degrees. So we, we, we get a lot of uh, embeddings here, but whether there's any particularly natural one, I don't know anything about that. So, moving on to more algebraic operations. And, well, if we're doing the sort of basic idea of taking our viral lattice as truth values, then the uh, join in the viral of the degrees should cover, um, well, means and. Um, if we, if we can, if we have a viral free, reduction from F to uh, G join H, that's, that means essentially we have a constructive procedure to well, solve F with the help of G and H. Um, but it turns out that sort of that's, this end really is hardly ever the end that shows up in an actual real life proof. Um, so the, the sort of lattice theoretic uh, notion that we need here is uh, being joined. Join irreducible. That means that uh, F has that property if whenever F is below a join of two things, F is already below one of them. So the, the joins don't help solving F. And it turns out that sort of most of the natural viral of degrees, if you sort of look at a theory that you want to classify and so on, they all have that property. Why do they have the property? Well, if you have a viral reduction from F to uh, G join H, there is a, well, a decision procedure that will tell you at some finite point and after reading the instance for F, whether you're going to ask a question to G or whether you're going to ask a, a question to, to H. So that means that we that really can split in a computable way the F instances into those where we're asking G questions and those where we're asking H questions. And natural theorems don't have the splitting into extremely different things, which means that if we would do that, we could probably just like take the part where we're asking H questions and not ask H questions, but do something else and do it with, with G questions still and, and thereby um, solve F still. So that is an end, but that's not the end that sort of helping us in a proof from F from 
G and H proves F. That's that's not what's happening. A slightly more natural and is just obtained by by looking at the car Cartesian product, where we're really saying we're asking we 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 ask a question to F and we ask a question to G and we get an answer from F and we get an answer from G. At both at the very same time. So the questions cannot depend on the answer we get from the other one. That gives us sort of another natural operation on M of uh, the degrees. And we can essentially go from that product to the um, <laughs> Kili star, which is, is just saying, um, okay, that's that that sort of thing. You can specify whether you want to ask a question, whether you don't want to ask a question, whether you want to ask a question to f, a question to f times f to f times f times f, and so on. We have a sort of standard structure here. We, we get a Kli algebra, but if and sometimes that product, the Cartesian product, actually works out. So. There are cases where, where that's really the operation that uh, we want to use in the end, but it's still not a very satisfying end because most of the times, if you're using two theorems in a proof, you will first use one and then you will use the second one in a way that depends on what you got from the first. So we get this uh, third end, which is covering the idea that we are using a G first and then F later, depending in a way that depends on what, what he told us. Once more, we see that it would be very easy to define the thing if we had a complete lattice. Uh, since we don't, we had to prove that um, that actually is a most complicated viral D degree which would can be written as a composition of things below the, the, the two, two, two principles. And that's the version which will typically let you translate a proof. One example there is um, since if you are looking at the proof that um, if you have the stable Ramsey theorem and the co cohesive principle that that lets you get um, the, the full Ramsey theorem for for pairs, that just gives you a reduction from um, RT22 to SRT22 star co. Um, but RT22 and the product of SRT22 and co aren't even comparable. So the sense the, the fact that you're doing one thing first and then the other thing later, depending on what you just, just did, really, really matters. And um, sort of and it, and it also turns out that the end in SRT22 and co um, is just the, the same as RT22 in reverse math, which end you mean depends on which direction of the proof you are doing. It's the uh, join for one direction and the star for uh, going the other way. Um, now, sort of, the next step in terms of let's look at some some logical structures of degrees could be a um, could, could, could model is uh, substructural logics and the idea there is that your end no longer has to be the join inside that that lattice but you still want these yeah, implication principles um, which are sort of the one of the least things that you need to add to a given um, truth value to get above the next one. One of those works out. So there always, so there is the least h such that g star h is um, can can solve f. Um, that one we get. But if we want to use first g and then h. There is no least one that, that works there. Essentially, H needs to tell us what question we would want to ask, uh, what question we would want to ask. 
if H is supposed to sort of clean up the mess after we ask a question to G that may have been not the right question, that just doesn't work out properly. Um, for the Cartesian product, of course, the direction doesn't matter, but we don't get an implication. Most of sort of a lot of the literature on substructural logics is assuming that whatever exactly and means A and B is the same thing as B and A. So and is supposed to be um, commutative. We don't get sort of and uh, there we just don't have any implications whatsoever. Some people look at ants that don't have that, but then they want both implications. And just having one implication, but not the other, seems to make our structure too weird for that community to, to like. So since we, we have something that looks a lot like a model for something logic-like, but despite the fact that we've been looking for years now, we haven't really found any sufficiently inter interesting structure where we actually had all the criteria there, had had for their, uh, for their structures. And I think it's the time may have come where sort of someone should build whatever kind of logic makes it work and just go, go with that then. Okay. Um, sort of something that seems like a very nice idea for various different reasons is, um, is to say, okay, if we have to pay attention to like how often we're using a principle, um, in what order we are using them and so on, we may just want to be able to, to, to say, I want to stop caring about that. And I want a um, operation on virus D, D degrees that just uh, takes the closure under comp position. And it's sort of a bit cumbersome, but ultimately not too mystical to build something that's supposed to work. One way of doing that would be we could define this as a diamond by saying an input for the principle F diamond is a description of some kind of abstract computation thing, a register machine where each register can hold elements from some represented spaces. Then you have the sort of usual register machine program that can use any kind of computable things in one step. And it can also just use F in one step. And combined with that description of this um, thingy, we also provide an input on which that computation actually works and terminates and doesn't call F on things that aren't F inputs and so on and so forth. And F diamond then is supposed to essentially tell us what happens if you run that computation on that input and tell us the answer. And that's sort of supposed to capture closure and the position. Um, now, proving that it does, that's a different story. For this clingy star, it's a sort of straightforward thing. The, we can sort of define the clingy star by saying, oh, um, F star is the least thing um, which, is, which can compute F and which can compute uh, one such that um, it's closed and it takes the Cartesian product. And then sort of the, we, we wanted the very same thing for the uh, diamond and the uh, composition. Um, Linda, Linda, the best trick was, was able to actually give us that. So yes, it is true that um, the, the diamond is just giving us the um, least var of de 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 degree, which is close in the composition and above one and F. Um, this has been something sort of the, the fact that it was not obvious that there was a least that there was a closure under composition that of that was noticed during CCA 2015. Um, and one thing that makes it a bit weird there is 
is for example, there's the constant function f. Um, so f doesn't take any, any input, f just outputs something. And there is a, a, a multivariate function g such that you can solve f using g diamond. But it's not possible to solve f using any fixed finite number of um, uses for, for g, which may sound weird because you, you could think, OK, if there is no input, what, what drives how many use, how often I would use G in my G diamond computation. How, what could that de depend on? Well, the answer is G can be multi-valued. So the first thing G can outputs can be what tells you how, how many more times you need to use G. You can easily count any kind of countable ordinals into, into that. So that is what, what makes it messy. And the proof in the end uses the re uses the re 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 recursion theorem in a way that I find uh, reminiscent of rather black magic, plus um, to prove that it all works in the end, you need to take a um, well-founded tree of branching factor continuum and in do induction on that. So um, I'm, I'm very happy I didn't have to prove this. I would have gone insane first. Okay, um, yeah, so brief, brief summary there. We have one interesting or, we could define more ors, but we don't even have a lot of applications for the, for the most, sort of for, for the nicest or. So um, that's, that's, that's what we would stick with, um, which is just the, the meat in the, in the bar of degrees. We have a bunch of ants, the join, the condition product, and then the sequential composition. There is sort of having three ends, one of which is non-commutative, means the potential for four implications that we may want to have of these four that could exist, only one does, this one here. And then we have various ways how we can say, oh, I want to have more one of more access to my oracles than just asking one question. Um, we can say, I want to ask a finite number of questions all at once or one after the other. This is the star and the, the diamond. Um, I haven't brought that up here, but of course we could look at the principle where we input an entire sequence of questions to F. We get outputs on the whole sequence. Um, in sort of in linear logic, these are all kinds of banks. So we also have more of those than I've really seen people considering at, at any one time. But my impression from sort of working with these structures is that um, and we really want all of these operations. So it's, it's not that we've gathered all of them and that can in order to later filter out which ones are the good ones, but these really seem to all matter. Hence this kind of complicated structure. Okay, I'm assuming that I can talk for about five more minutes and then should leave some time to, for questions. So I'll jump to, um, I don't know why it jumped there. I was planning to jump to the big open questions. All right, so um, my understanding is that people had a huge amount of fun looking in questions like, is the uh, Turing jump definable in the um, partially ordered set of the, of the Turing D? Degrees are these kinds of special degrees definable in that structure and so on. Um, and well, one way of, of essentially keep our huge list of how operations manageable would, would be if we can figure out whether some of these operations are definable in terms of the, 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 the rest. Well, it's, it's sort of well known that if you have a that if you have a lattice, you can define the lattice operation in terms of the partial order structure. Um, but for example, whether the product 
at, or the that's most natural viral degree at all, the computable problems as computable questions, whether these are definable in terms of the overall structure. If I'm probably not the right person to kind of figure that out, but I think it would be an interesting question. So um, please, someone go and figure that out. Um, so the, the reason why I say the composition isn't here is because I suspect that it's sort of if we can't do the Cartesian product, if we can't get the answer for the Cartesian product, the composition is way messier, but um, that would definitely be, be quite interesting as well. Um, sort of, it, it, with this idea that if we can't just find like pre-existing substructural logic of some sort and then show, oh, the royalty degrees are a, a model for, for that logic, then the other idea would be, as I said, start with the value of the degrees and just figure out what is the, the structure. But the principle where, from the sense where we can do this kind of thing is, for example, we know that we have a di di distributive lattice here and every countable distributive lattice um, shows up as a substructure, which we, we didn't have had, had to do any kind of real work for. It works for the Medvedev ones. We can embed the Medvedev degrees with the swap of the order, but that doesn't matter here into the the the, 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 the degrees. And that tells us if you have any kind of universally quantified statement over the value of the, the degrees using uh, just join. <laughs> And meet either you can prove that just from the um, rules of how a distributive lattice looks like, or it's false in the value of the degrees. And sort of, it would be great if we could get something like that for more of the operations, where we can say, okay, um, here is the list of sort of true of some axioms guiding how these principles look like. And for any statement universally quantified, you can either prove it from those lists or you can find a counter <laughs> example. Um, Vasco and I essentially looked into nice short statements that one might put into such a list of axioms and sort of showed whether they are true or not. Um, but the, the step of going anywhere near whether the things we have identified as true is complete for everything or not, again, is beyond what we what we tried to do by quite a bit. And I think that was an interesting thing to pick up on. Last one. Um, I could have said a lot about related degree structures, but um, as you see, time is short. A particular one that I want to, to bring, bring up are the continuous um, version. That's essentially what you get if you relativize the definition of viral free reducibility relative to some arbitrary oracle. Um, and then my, my question here is, uh, sort of what does that step do to, to, to viral free? Degrees. So, sort of, what happens? Um, sort of how do all of the viral of the de de degrees that fall inside a particular con continuous viral of the de degree look like? We know it for the um, like viral for the continuous viral of the degree one, because the continuous viral of degree one is exactly that image where the um, dual of the of the Medvedev flatters uh, went. So that continuous viral degree we understand. But what happens in, in the others? Do we always get the Medvedev lattice at least somewhere? Do we get more? Do we get 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 less? Um, yeah, something I would like to, to know and would be great if I don't have to find it out myself, if someone else can can tell me. And that's the point where I stop. Thanks.
Thanks so much, Joanna. Um, are there questions? Actually, uh, Arna, I have a quick question. Um, do you know anything about uh, bigger distributive lattices that can be embedded? I mean, this is some universality going on. It's like universal distributive lattice of, of its size or something like that. Um, sort of like, I don't know sort of what would happen Like if you're if you're looking at you know, con, con, continuum or so, sort of that's um, I mean sort of if there is anything which is like straightforward from the literature, it will again be uh, sort of look at what goes into the Medvedev ones. Um, no, I mean that that's the question. I mean, you say you know you're a universal object, and if so, is, is this the is this the universal object? That sounds like another mm -hmm. question that deserves a place in this list. But... Thanks. Are there are other questions. I have a question. Um, so you have a couple of versions of of what linear logic calls bang, where you sort of promote uh, a problem F to one where you have to do it many times. It see, is there, has anyone looked at the possibility of not modifying the, the F, but modifying the notion of reducibility in your diagram at the beginning? What I would like to think of is something like compute one function as follows, first, as in Weirau, produce, produce an input to your oracle, then using the results that it gives you and your original input, produce another input to the oracle, using that and your original input, produce another, and after a while, exit the box and do an, a computation of the answer you really wanted. In particular, I guess what I'm really interested in is would such a modification of viral reducibility possibly give you intuitionistic logic rather than these substructural things? Um, so assuming that, that eventually here uh, means after finitely many steps, um, then the answer is yes, someone did look at that, and that person is Dennis, who is here. So, I don't know if you want to give a say something. Um, yeah, so maybe, uh, yeah, there's a notion of generalized wire reducibility that was introduced in a paper at Carl Jackish and me. Uh, and <laughs> um, so and the answer, so, so there is this notion, we, we've been studying it, there's, you know, there's work on it. Um, and the answer uh, in the connection with intuitionistic logic is complicated and being worked out and probably a little too complicated. There's some work that Rutger Kuyper did that's related to that, but there's some issues with this work and there's, um, that were brought up by Patrick Uftring, who was a student of uh, Ulrich Kolenbach, uh, who was doing some. So there are some very complicated issues there that are still being worked out, including in a project uh, that I have with Demir and my student, Sarah Reitz. So stay tuned, I guess, is the answer. We don't know exactly. But yes, that is very much, uh, that, that is, is very much um, a way that we're trying to go towards. Thank you. Um, but by the way, sort of see the, the um, kind of sense do, doing that change is essentially the very same thing as putting the and as, as putting the diamond um, on. So F is generalized var of below G if and only F uh, F is var of below uh, G diamond. Um, so sort of in a 
in one sense, one could say, if we would actually understand the structure with all the operations and so on, that, that entails knowing like whether the image of diamond is a hating algebra and so on. So we, we can sort of always keep the reduction notion constant and create a lot of things just by playing around with these operations instead. Are there other questions? If not, I just wanted to ask when it's I mean, related to something that we've talked about before. Um, so one thing that one can do, and you, you, you were the one who told me that, uh, like Andre Bauer and some other people have, have looked at that already in the past, is to allow for um, problems that have instances with no solution. Uh, and that, for example, gives you a natural top to yep. uh, anything. Uh, so do you know structural reasons why that might be, what might lead to, you know, like some less, you know, less nice structural properties or something like that? Sort of, I, I don't think that uh, sort of that would make, well, um, since the, these new principles would, well, are never below anyone's, any of those that we, that we, we, that we would currently have. Um, the idea there is essentially that we, sort of, that we do not define defines the domain of a principle as all of those like potential instances where there is a so solution to it, but that the domain is just explicitly given as a, a set. And then if you can manage to ask your oracle um, about an, a sort of instance where it's formally defined on, but where there is no so solution to it, then it's essentially you are done because the definition of the um, says only that you need to yourself give a correct answer for every um, correct answer that your um, oracle uh, could give you. So if, if there is no correct answer from the oracle, you don't need to, to do anything after having asked. It's, it's a bad question. For the like simple principles, it's all rather straightforward how to sort of extend the operation as, and so on. Um, which in particular will, will mean that sort of those structure things that we have, I think should, should carry over. The fact that we don't have certain things are witnessed by as like concrete finitely many principles that are showing that stuff can't work. And since, where the new principles show up is like only only on the top. The new principles, for example, couldn't make an infimum exist that didn't before and stuff like that. Um, so I don't think that like really much changes. I've recently heard from Andre that he's sort of that he is still in, in intending to write and publish that paper. I don't know where on that process that that is, but I, I kind of hope that soonish he'll, he'll tell us everything that he has figured out and then, then we can see what Great. else needs to be done there. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Well, if not, let's thank Arno again, clap in people's behalf.